Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. This is the sixth part of a multi-part series on building a podcast client app with Xamarin Forms. In part five, we created audio controls for our podcast to play, pause, stop, and go forward and backward 10 seconds. In this episode, we're going to start work on a playlist feature. That is, we want to let the user add episodes to a playlist and listen to them all in series. And that's all coming right up on the .NET Show. So at this point, our application shows a bunch of episodes, the first 20 episodes, or the latest 20 episodes, and we see this details thing right here on our drop-down menu, but we want to remove that uh, because this isn't something we can just navigate to without, you know, without a show. So if we do go to an episode's details, we see this detail page with a picture of the guest or guests and their bio. And we have good control over the audio. We can play. We can go back 10 seconds. We can go forward 10 seconds. We can stop and pause and resume. If we pause and then play, it continues where it left off. You can also scrub with this uh, guy right there. So this is where we are now. And uh, today we're going to add some playlist functionality. We're going to start with that. So if you look at the readme file that's in the repo, these are our user stories. As a user, I want to create a new playlist and give it a name. As a user, I want the app to automatically persist my playlists. I want to be able to retrieve a playlist from the list of playlists that I have created. Yes, you're going to have a list of playlists. I want to delete an existing playlist. And uh, this is about how far we're going to get today. But going on, we want to select one or more episodes to add to the playlist, want to be able to remove episodes from the playlist, want to be able to reorder them or move episodes forward or backwards in play order. And for the playlist, we want the same level of audio control that we do for a single episode, play, pause, stop, go back, and go forward. So again, we're going to get to the point where we can create playlists, persist them, and delete them. So the first thing let's do is add a playlist model. To the models folder, we're going to add a new class called playlist. And here it is. So I'm using a GUID for the ID. And GUIDs are obviously global unique identifiers. When you create them, they are unique in the world. And then we have a name property, a date created property, and a list of show. Now, if you recall, show is the class that really identifies an episode. I called, I've called it show forever, so we're going to stick with that. Now to the view models folder, we're going to add a new view model. And this one has a longish name, playlist manager page view model. So starting at the top, we're inheriting from base view model, like our other two. Uh, we have a cache dir because we are using the monkey cache file store for playlists to persist them, just like we are for audio files. So in the case of playlists, we want to put these in a subfolder of the cache directory called slash playlists. And if you recall, this cache directory abstracts the platform-specific folder where cached files are stored on the device. And by itself, that's where all the MP3 files are, but we're now adding a subfolder called Playlists and creating it if it doesn't exist. Now we're defining a read-only property for the Playlist list, so it only has a getter, not a setter. It's an observable collection because, again, when you're using Xamarin Forms, the way that properties update when you update them is by making them observable. So when somebody goes to get the playlist property, if our private playlist member is null, then we're creating a new observable collection and we're looking for JSON files in our cache dir 
with directory get files. And then for each one of those, we're reading the JSON text, deserializing that into a playlist, and adding that to our playlists list. The next few methods are private because we're going to call them internally to manage the list. So first is save playlists. So for each list in our playlists collection, we're going to serialize it. We're going to pick a file name, which is from the list ID. Remember, that's a GUID, so that's a unique string, .json, and then we're going to write it. So saving doesn't do any deleting, any updating. It just takes each one of our playlists, serializes it, and writes it to disk. So let's take a look at add or update playlist. So this method works for both adding a new playlist or taking an existing one and updating it. So first we see if it already exists in our playlists collection. And if it does, then we get the index of it and use that index to update it in place. Otherwise, we're setting the ID to create GUID, which returns a GUID. And I've used this method before to return a random GUID and adding it to the playlists. And either way, we're going to call save playlists. Next is delete playlist, which should be fairly obvious what we're doing here. We're seeing if it exists. And if it does, we're pulling out the real file name, seeing if the file name exists, which it should, and then deleting the file. Then we're removing it from our playlists and updating save playlists. Next, we're going to add a couple of commands, one to create a playlist and one to delete a playlist. So here's the code for a new playlist. So as with our other commands, uh, we're creating a read-only I command property called new playlist. And it's read-only because it only has a getter. And if new playlist, which is our private version, is null, we're creating a new one as an async command, perform new playlist. So essentially what that means, as I've said before, is that when this command is executed, it's going to call this guy right here, perform new playlist. Now, content page. So we need to prompt the user with uh, essentially an input dialog box. And we're asking them for a name. Now we're in the view model. The content page, or the page actually, is what exposes this display prompt async. We don't have access to that in the view model. So we're going to need a content page that represents the page in the view model. Where are we going to set that? Well, that's coming up in a minute. But essentially, by the time we get to this line, 71, we've got a name from the user. They've entered a name, you know, my playlist, whatever. So then we create a new playlist with that name. And the date created is now. And then we're going to call add or update playlist. That's our private method. And then we're calling base.onPropertyChanged to tell Xamarin Forms that the playlist's observable collection property has changed. And it will read that again. All right, next we're going to add a command to delete. So here's our delete command. And this is an async command of GUID, meaning that we're going to have to pass it a GUID, which points to perform delete playlist right down here. It is async. It doesn't have to be, though. But I like async commands. I like having them. And uh, if I want to appease the compiler, I can just call something like this. Await task delay 0. doesn't really do anything. So we're checking to see if it exists based on the ID. And if it does, we're calling delete playlist. And then again, on property changed. So very simple there. All right, now let's create a new view. Uh, we're going to add a new content page called playlist manager page. So a new item, content page, playlist manager page. And here it is. Now, remember I told you that in the view model, we have this little matter to take care of, the content page. This is where we're going to do it, in the code behind for this playlist manager page we just created. So we're essentially overriding 
on appearing, and we have to qualify this guy. There we go. And now when the page appears, we are getting the view model from the binding context, and we're setting the page property to this. So that way, in the view model, this will be set to the, the reference of the page itself. And that's how we can call display prompt async. Let's do what we need to do to run this, and then I'll discuss how this works. So the first thing we need to do is add a flyout item to app shell. So go to app shell XAML, and you remember uh, I told you that we needed to get rid of this. Well, yeah, we, we actually didn't need this to be a flyout item in order for the detail page to work. In order for the detail page to work, this is what we did. In the code behind, we registered the route detail page. That's really all you need in order to be able to call that. But in app shell XAML, this is for the flyout menu item for the shell. So what we're going to do is replace this flyout item with this flyout item. So it's a playlist manager. The route is playlist manager page. The content template is data template local colon playlist manager page, just like we did with the home page. And now we need to add the register route method call here. There it is. Now that's everything we need in order to run this. Let's run it and then we'll discuss the code. All right, so here we go. Just as before, we didn't need to have that be a flyout item. But if you look on the page, now we have this playlist manager option and we can add new. And when we click this, here's our input box. We're going to enter a name. Let's just say Azure because I want to pick all the episodes from the list of episodes that have to do with Azure. And then I can say, okay. Now take a look at this. Azure, which is the name, followed by parentheses zero and parentheses and the date and time. That zero is the number of episodes in the list. So right now there's none. Now let's just add another one. Another list. There we go. So now we have two. We can delete. We can delete. And before we delete this one, let's just make sure that we're persisting them by closing it, running it again. There it is. Okay, that does everything we want it to do. Now let's go through the Playlist Manager page. So at the top, you see the binding context, just like we did in the Detail page. This is very similar to the Detail page in that way. We're setting the view model to Playlist Manager page view model. The view model's namespace is defined right here. CLR namespace .NET rocks view models. We have a main stack layout with a button, add new, right? And this is bound to new playlist. So that is the command that executes in the view model, which goes and asks the user for a name and creates a new playlist object, adds it to the list and saves it. That's what add or update playlist does, if you recall, right? It's not there, so it creates a GUID, adds it, and then calls save playlists. Save playlists goes through all the uh, lists in playlist, serializes them, and writes them to the cache dir as id.json. Okay, next, we have our DevExpress DX collection view, which shows the same sort of view for each item by defining an item template. We're setting the item source to playlists, our playlist read-only property. Uh, here's the item template and a data template. So for each item in the list of playlists, we have a stack layout. And this is something new. I'm showing a label and a label formatted text property which is a formatted string. So rather than having a whole bunch of labels and worrying about spacing and all that stuff, we have this formatted string, which is a bunch of spans. So I've got name and then space, 
parentheses, and then the shows count, which is the number of shows in the playlist, end parentheses space, and then date created using the uh, date and time format. Now I'm creating a horizontal stack layout below that label where we are going to put the buttons, a button for delete, a button for edit. So starting with delete, we're binding to the delete command. Now because the delete command is not in the show class but is actually in the view model class, we have to set the source to playlist manager page view model. And the command parameter, what we're passing in, is the ID, or the GUID, of this particular show. And then I have my line, which is just a, a gray line that separates them, just like I did in the other two pages. So that's where we're going to stop today, and next week we'll get to work on the playlist itself. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.